Say hi. Hey. Welcome to this episode of Grease Garage. And today we are going from the turbo to the intake via the intercooler. <laughs> Now, Josh, tell us about the intercooler. It is a eBay spec GPI racing uh, 600 by 300 by 75. So pretty big bloody intercooler. It's pretty big and um, maybe a bit too big. It's definitely way too big, to be honest. Yeah, but it's okay. We'll we'll get it in there. So. So doesn't that look awesome? So what we got here is a bar and plate, 400 by 400, in black, intercooler that we've modified. So pretty much all we've had to do was weld in a plate up here, and weld two brackets on the side, and this is solid mounted, and it can take a hit because, like I said before, it's bar and plate. So bar and plate, a couple of awesome things about them is they're a lot stronger than the tube and fin ones you can buy. Also, they cool a lot better. But the downside is they are more restrictive. You can go a tube and fin, they are a lot more delicate, but they do flow better. So, I mean, you gotta make your decision what you actually want to do. Um, Price wise, they're pretty much the same these days. Tube and fin usually maybe go for a bit more depending on the quality of the build pretty much. All right, so I'm just marking this little bit here because I wanna know where I can actually cut because I wanna remove the white or cut it. So I can get the intercooler piping into here. We're running two and a half inch and the intercooler is three inch. So a couple things we could do. We could put an adapter here or maybe get a three to two and a half inch bend and join it in there. It's, it's going to be tight. Uh, so we really need to take our time and ply it by ear. But that's pretty much how we're going to go. I can't come from, down through here um, on this side because there's a structural section here and there's just, there's just no room on this side to do it. Um, so, let's get chopping. So you might think it's weird that I'm using a hacksaw instead of an angle grinder. Pretty much, I don't want to make a mess. I don't want to spend hours cleaning up every single little piece of metal because I use the angle grinder. So that is why I'm using a hacksaw. And as you can see, I'm pretty talented with it. So I've got two options to start with. Should I use the solid bend or do I use the silicon bend? And I have no doubt in my mind the solid bend would look a lot nicer in that engine bay. But honestly, that's the only benefit in this situation. The silicon bend is going to allow the engine to move more freely and also not put as much pressure on that turbo housing. I'm using a two and a half inch intercooler kit off eBay that Josh has supplied. And starting with a 45 degree bend, just seems logical and with a quick cut with the blade saw it slides straight in like it's made to be there and I'm a happy man till my brain legitimately explodes as I try to figure out how I'm going to go from A to B and get this all to work in such a small space so if normal bends are not going to work and I can't get my hands on anything tighter that leaves me with one option, the pie bend. Pretty much, it is pipe that has been cut down like this to make a bend, and that's what I'm gonna do. By chopping up the supplied aluminium and cleaning up the cuts, I am able to start piecing together each cut section to make something that's going to work for this interval. So we're by the bench, we're by the welder. That means it's business time. We're gonna smash and welds on this first bit of intercooler piping. But before anyone should get started in doing this, you should do some practice runs, and I'm so glad I actually did. They didn't start off very pretty. Um, as you see, I've done about 10 little goes there, and I ended up with this really nice speed, so I'm happy that this machine is now dialed in. How we're gonna be doing this is we're gonna start the large, and then work our way down to the small stuff, and the reason why I'm doing that is because as the bits get smaller, they're more likely to melt. 
especially when you've got these little angle bits that pie into a little bit. Yeah, they melt real quick and real easy. So the reason we're doing that is because as we weld, let cool down, this section becomes a heat sink, pulling the heat out as we weld. And hopefully that works. It, they're a bit tiny, but sometimes you just gotta do it. So let's get into it. Does that look awesome? So it's coming through. We're definitely in the ballpark. Um, the problems I'm having so far is when I weld this PVC tape or whatever it is, it's going soft and it's going all over the place. It's no bueno. It's not going very well for me. So I'm gonna have to undo it and set it back up. But man, I'm, I'm happy. It's in the ballpark. It's just getting late. So I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow. And so it is tomorrow, and the first thing I'm going to do is pull off this grey tape. And because I don't have a lot of room for error, I'm going to check each piece, mark it, weld it, and then recheck it. And do all that until it's finished. Now guys, make sure you have some real time to spend on this, as it's something you cannot rush. Especially when you're room restricted like I am. And due to that, I'm installing some edge guard that will protect the piping and stop any knocking for when the engine is running. Once that's all done, I slide the headlight back on and then check out the finished product. How are you? Do you think Dave did a good job? No. No? What did Dave do wrong? Mm. Yeah, I uh, agree. I don't think my welds were the best. I think, you know, the metal was a bit contaminated and I should have sanded it back more, prepped it a bit better. So now we've got to drill this side, don't we? Is it, is it going to be fun? Are we going to do it with a drill or are we going to burn it with... Burn it. I'll burn it. Yeah, I'll, I'll say we burn it. Okay. That means I'll burn it today. So now the real challenge starts. Getting a bigger pipe into the engine bay, trying to avoid bad wiring, multiple aircon lines, a wheel well, a radiator, and without taking anything structural integrity wise, out with a hustle. So the first thing I do here is wipe down the area and reinstall the headlight. Get a marking pen and mark the areas where either there is an object taking up that section or something structural that I cannot cut. And I'm left with this space and it seems that we have a winner. So I mean Logan? Mm -hmm. Not easy. Now I think it's pretty easy to see that this is struggle town. The hole saw relies on a centre drill bit to guide the actual hole saw and stop it jumping around all over the place. But because the centre hole is actually in the void, I just got to take it easy and take my time. Once it's all finished, I've removed all the sections in the middle I need to. I get all my tools and I start cleaning up the surrounding area. And this is what it looks like after a couple of hours of sanding, welding, and painting. As you can see, we've got a three inch glory hole straight into the engine bay. Heaps of rooms for activities in here. And it's gonna work really, really well. Now, if you guys were doing a two and a half inch pipe through here, there would actually be enough room to make this movable, like this side. But I'm gonna make this side, because if we're going three inch, fixed. So it'll be fixed here and then when it pops into the engine bay I'll put a nice looking join so the last little bit can move the engine. So in Josh's wisdom he has supplied us with these fantastically smooth three inch long radius bends that are not going to work at all. So we need to fix it and how do we do that? We've got a fixed intercooler, we've got a fixed hole, we've got a big girthy shaft. We need to make this more angled so it slides in. And this is how we do it. Pretty much, you do a center line, you mark a minimum on the bottom, you mark your distance on the top, and you make triangles. Like this, pretty much the gist of it. 
You do that three or four times and you're gonna get a nice tight radius bend by doing that. If you want, you can also just get a protractor, put it on the center line and you can work out your angles that way. For example, if you did two of these at 245s, you would get your 90. So, that's straightforward. Let's start cutting. I'm cutting the ends off this long radius 90 degree bend at a 17 to 18 degree angle. This will be the start of my tight radius bend. I then cut two sections and prep them ready to be welded. You want the two pieces to fit well together. This will stop a heap of heartache when you actually are ready to start welding. Before I lay down a bead, I like to do two small welds on opposite side of the pipework to stop any movement from heat. I then get in a comfortable position and start laying some welds. All right, so I've made my second little 90 here and I've also welded a bit of straight on. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get it there so you can roughly guess where it is. So apparently it is extremely hard to talk with a penned end in your mouth. After making another tie bend at 90 degrees, it's ready to weld these together. And as you can see, it's just a repeat of the first. Tack both sides of the pipe to stop movement and then lay a bead. Oh, she's close. She's close, but look at that. Yep, fits in. Got hits of room around there. Chuck the headlight in quickly. How good does that look? That's gonna be awesome. The grill's gonna sit just right there so you'll see the intercooler and the piping as well. And I'll polish that up once I'm done. So a couple more things we have to do. We have to do the little bit into the actual engine bay, weld that up, and then we're gonna weld a bracket here. Looking awesome, really happy with it so far. Let's get on to it. Into the engine bay we go. Before I get deep in the engine bay, I'm removing any imperfections from the aluminium piping to make sure there is minimal restrictions for airflow. I find that it's an easy job for a drum well with an extension, and the benefit of using an extension, you get to keep the electric motor in the drum well away from water, which is what I'm using to keep the piping cool and wash out any grindings. Due to the shape of the intercooler piping, I have done this after each weld, otherwise there would be sections that I could not reach once it's done. Once I'm finished moving all the imperfections, I sand the outside to get it ready to weld and fix the bracket onto the 3 inch piping. The bracket itself is just an old piece of scrap that had pre-drilled holes in it already, so all I need to do is cut down to size and bend it to the shape. I fix it to the forby with a temporary self-tapping screw and then weld it into place. And then once I've done that, I give it a quick polish. And there we go, that's what it looks like after a bit of polish work. And obviously we sanded it with a thousand grit sandpaper. So this does slide in, there's a bit of a trick to it. And there we go. So that's nicely done, I'm very happy with how that's turned out. Now as I said before, this is going to be a fixed pipe. So the last pipe we're going to do is from the inside of this to the throttle body. It's going to be a long day, but I reckon we can get it done. Let's get to it. Home stretch. Let's get this done. I'm sticking the radiator back in to make sure that I don't take up the same space as the three inch piping and looking at it, that was a good idea. To get from A to B, a straight pipe isn't going to cut it. And after trying a bunch of pre-made piping, again, I come to the realization I need to go custom. So I get the pre-made 90 degree bend and a piece of straight pipe to try and figure out if I cut the 90 degree bend in half to make a 45 degree angle, will it work? And it would, but it wouldn't be perfect. I need to cut two bends up to try and make it go from A to B. So what I do is I mark out the 90 degree bend and then cut it roughly where it might work. I reinstalled the cut section and then use the other cut section to try and line up the bottom so it can join. Once I'm happy, I mark and then chop. Weld it up, and all I need now is to install a straight bit of pipe to make it all come together. 
And at the end of it, this is what it came up with. As you can see behind me, it's night time and I've got it done. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Actually, check this out, hold on. Look at that, that's all solid. And this pot has heaps of movement. It all is gonna work really, really well. Happy with how it's turned out. Way more work than it should have been, but that's what you get in a tight engine bay like this. So the next episode, guys, I'm thinking that we start cleaning up a couple things. Maybe look at cleaning up the wiring and getting the initial system all sorted out. And if we get time, we'll do the oil feed and the oil return. And then there's nothing really stopping us from starting up and hearing it actually spool up a bit and give us some boost, which would be pretty awesome. So if you want to see that and you like what you're watching, please subscribe. It supports me and the channel and we want to build it up. So. Thumbs up and share to your mates. Cheers guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Let me put this one right there. You reckon these ones? Mm -hmm. I guess they one right here. It's gonna be pretty hard to get them up in here. What? 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 We gotta get them through here. Why? Because how else are we gonna do it? Do you see a way of doing it? What? Do you see another way of doing it? Yeah. How? That. Exactly. That's how we're going to go, isn't it? Mm -hmm. High five. I got three over there. Ah! And you might.